Are Uber Eats and Grubhub orders changing in my market? I've been accepting every Uber Eats order for months now, and I can tell you that the orders just don't seem to be coming in. So I looked back at this last quarter's worth of data, and I can see some definite trends and some indications that I wanted to share with you. So last quarter, 34% of all my orders were on Uber Eats, and 45% were on Grubhub. Also, 28% of my earnings came from Uber Eats, and 40% came from Grubhub. My average order on Uber Eats was $11.67, and it was $12.70 on Grubhub. I do track all my miles, so the same quarter last year, this quarter I drove another 457 miles. That's quite a bit. More surprising, fuel was 21% of all my earnings. That works out to $1.24 per mile for the last quarter. So what am I gonna do about it? Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna keep taking every Uber Eats order, that way I get up to 100% acceptance rate and, and report those findings to you and myself to see if it's worth it to have such a high acceptance rate. I'm at 97% right now, so I've only got, say, 20 something more orders to do. And then I'm gonna do it for quite a while and have a nice amount of data. That way it can prove one way or the other if it's acceptable. Also, based on my experience, I can tell the difference between Uber Eats and Grubhub now. Customers tip more on Uber Eats than they do on Grubhub, but Grubhub up front's giving you a higher offer because here in California, we get Prop 22. They're incorporating that into every order. So every week or every two weeks, I'm getting less money from Grubhub in Prop 22 compared to a larger amount on Uber Eats. But something that's out of my control. I am willing to take every order on Uber Eats, but if there's not enough orders or if there's too many drivers out there, then I can accept an order. And I have no way of proving one way or the other what's happening. On the flip side, I definitely am getting more orders from Grubhub, but I feel like they're making me drive further. Now, I do track all my mileage, but I don't break it up by app, so these are just my feelings, my assessments. I can't prove it one way or the other. But I will say, I do have the proof I've driven more. I'm getting less Uber Eats and more Grubhub. So that's why I'm able to uh, give you that conclusion. So what am I gonna do? There's two things that I'm gonna do about this. First, like I said, I'm gonna keep doing every Uber Eats order. Next, I'm just gonna limit myself on Grubhub. If there's those really long distance deliveries, I'm just not gonna do it. My car is older. I keep having constant repairs and I don't always share them with you here, but just had another one. So I'm going to limit the miles on my vehicle. I'm going to focus more on short distance deliveries. And this is the age old issue in rideshare, long distance, short distance. I have found overall in both that short distance trips are the best, less miles, you get more turnover, more chance for tips. So in light of my car's aging condition, I'm just going to scale back on the long distance trips. And another thing that I've noticed with Grubhub, on those long distance trips, they're not placing me in a market where there's a lot of restaurants. It's more rural, and so I'm having to drive back several miles to get to a restaurant. So that's another reason why I don't wanna take the long distance Grubhub orders. It's amazing, you can't always trust your feelings, but when you have data, you can be confident, at least you know what's going on. There's always gonna be uncertainty in gig work. Is there anything that you can do to manage that? I know there is, and you can learn some beneficial tips too when you watch this video next.